Olympics. I believe he coaches them now, and so obviously keep it in the family. So Green and Gaff are in there, and they're away. Is, is it when it's not an Olympic event? Do, 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 do individuals put less priority on this? Yes, I know. I think uh, you know a race is a race, and uh, I think we've been seeing it in the 500 for men's kayak. You know, everyone's still going in that race. Big full event. So I think people really just like racing, and they put all they have into it. I think we saw that in the previous race with Henrietta. I mean, as, as Sean said, <laughs> yeah. she was racing herself, and you know, she gave 110 percent, like as the Olympic final. I mean, you could tell she'd really worked for that. And I think when you're here, you need to, to grab that opportunity to push yourself on the course, and, and uh, people are still taking it seriously. And the um, the Austrian crew there in, in lane one, you know, they're a, they're a good crew. And also at the bottom, we picture the ones we haven't mentioned yet: Alia Jamelot and Sarah Toil from France. We can see how they come through. Yeah, this Polish crew looks like they're out for a stroll. They're just having a good time, looking very efficient out front. There's Carolina Pielin and Maitala Lisecki. Oh yeah, understroking everyone. That's always good to see. <laughs> now, whether that's efficiency or fatigue, you never know. So, so you're happy with their action as a coach? If I saw my crew paddling like that out front, uh, I'd, I'd be pretty optimistic. They seem to be pretty relaxed, pretty efficient. That's that's a good sign. And Ben, it looks to me almost slow motion. Yeah, it does. I mean, that's um, a little bit how Adam paddles. He, he gets out strong and fast, and he makes it look easy. And I think that's really important, especially in the team boat. You need to get that boat run, and, and those crews are doing that. I think they, uh, they've got a good, a good foundation of technique there. Great power. It's coming out to the halfway line. We're still close with three boats in it. Four boats in it. It's changing slightly. The Swedes are coming through. So they do have some form and be together for a couple of years now. Sweden seems to have a lot of athletes over here at the moment. Yeah, they have a good big team here. Uh, they're all good friends with Canada, so we've been chatting and having fun. But uh, they look like they're having a good K2 race right now, coming up strong. And as you know, Poland are in with a chance because the horns are out. The local crowd are giving it their best as we're coming into you live from Poland. Lane number six, I say the French pairing. Difficult to see exactly where they are, but it looks like there's still four boats coming into it with 250 meters to go. Yeah, they still got a good controlled rate. We're still in it. France seems to be putting in more strokes that, you know, that might not be good for the finish. And then Austria crew seems to be in it as well. Two boats from Austria, obviously, lanes number two and lane number five, Agnieszka Kolajki and Evelina Wojciechowska. Yeah, they're paddling great. Big, tall, like they're six feet. It's good to see. Yeah, that stroke rate might not even be as low as we think, you know, they're just so smooth that slows it down. The Russian crew on the 200 for men's kayak is also like that, you know, they just, they make it look so good that it's almost like it's in slow motion. Last 100 meters to go, lane one, Austria, lane five in a bright yellow, painful for the ice boat, again, Austria, Poland. Poland looking like come through, the France are coming through in the last 40, 40 yep. 50 meters, Austria tiring a little bit. It's going to be Poland lane number five. France coming very, very pleasantly lane number six to take it. And Austria will take third position. Yeah, very impressive race. Looked like they just had control of the whole way. They didn't even look, the makeup hasn't smeared at all, and they didn't even look that tired. <laughs> That was a very good race by Poland. That was some very good paddling there. That's uh, one of the smoothest K2s I've seen for a little while. They seem to have a lot of, I know it's the home regrets, so they obviously they, they have everyone out, but they seem to have a lot of strength and depth, the Poles. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, they've got a very strong federation and, you know, they host a World Cup every year. It shows, you know, how important kayaking is here and, and it's great to see that, you know, manifest into, you know, the top, top crews that they're able to produce. Still got races to go. Have a 
medal ceremony coming up in the next next couple of minutes. They're going to have the uh, the flying fours. They're going to have the men's K1 4 1000 and the men's C4 1000. We've managed to especially slide into the schedule today, which is good news. So we're going to have 10 races to you today. Sean Fair from Canada, Ben Furry from New Zealand. So it's an Anglo-Saxon uh, group here. In Canada, you have quite a few Frenchies and quite a few uh, English in the same boat. Does that work well? Uh, yeah. Uh, sadly for the French, they, they typically have to learn English before we learn French. Uh, we all try to make an effort, but they're, they're, they're much better at learning our language. Uh, but, you know, when you're younger, you're going to have a few people that don't really know any English at all. But once you get to this level, pretty much everyone can speak English. K2, 1,000 women's finals, Poland, France, and Austria as we 